Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I want to take a look at Tempest 4000. It is an unapologetic, hardcore video game by Jeff Minter, who is pretty much one of my you know, heroes. Jeff is a proper old school video game developer, and yeah, he's probably best known for the Tempest games, although he didn't write the original Tempest. The original Tempest was a coin op from 1980 created by David Thurer who's also known for Missile Command and for iRobot. iRobot was the first uh, coin-op game, the first video game essentially, to use solid 3D shaded graphics. But as a coin-op, Tempest really turned my head. I mean, yeah, it had these great, really crisp vector graphics using a color vector display, but uh, it also had a control system which was a spinning wheel. You could turn it and it was great because you could very precisely control your position, but equally you could very quickly move from one side of the web to the other, and that was critical if you were going to be a good player. It also had a little known cheat mode, which is kind of rare for a coin op, but yeah, it was possible to access extra credits, lives, and all that if you wanted. So in the 90s, Jeff Minter updated it, and given that it wanted to be more futuristic, he called it Tempest 2000. This was released on the Atari Jaguar, and it was the best game on the console. Unfortunately, nobody bought that console. It was actually ported to MS-DOS, the Saturn, and to the PlayStation as a Tempest X3, and I played the heck out of that game. That was a port, that wasn't Jeff's original handiwork. The next version of Tempest that Jeff would program would be Tempest 3000, which appeared on New On Enhanced DVD players, a games platform that somehow turned out to be even more obscure than the Jaguar. Then a few years ago he released something called TXK, which was a thinly veiled copy of Tempest 2000 released for modern gaming hardware in the form of the PlayStation Vita. I of course was hoping for a port to a console that I cared about, except that Atari, or at least the company that owns Atari that used to be called Infograms, they pointed out that it did indeed look an awful lot like Tempest 2000, which they still owned the rights to. So the game was doomed to remain a Vita exclusive. And last year my wife acquired a Tempest 2000, but this incarnation does nothing for me. But now we have Tempest 4000 and this is on the PlayStation 4. Finally, Jeff Minter has personally coded a game for a console I own. Uh, it, it does, however, support 4K modes. It supports 120 hertz displays. You know, it's, you know, it basically it's all about intense visuals, fast gameplay, and if this is not your thing, I totally understand, but I'm a kid from the 80s, and Tempest was the pinnacle of all this for me. So if you haven't guessed by now, the basic idea with Tempest is you are sitting at the top of what's called a web, it's like a tunnel, you're looking down into this hole and you're shooting things that come out to, towards you. Dave Thurer apparently said that he had a dream about this, that he was on the edge of a hole and he was looking down and throwing rocks at the monsters, and that was his inspiration for this game. So Tempest 2000, they added power-ups, and the power-ups are very important to get through the level. You start out with a crappy little gun, and uh, as you get through the level, you get upgrades. When you complete the level, you have a segment where you can fly through the hoops. On the PlayStation, you control this by adjusting the new attitude of the controller, but uh, the rest of the game, you're still using the standard joystick controls. So yeah, next level, you get a slightly different shaped webs, and these are, of course, nice and simple and tame. So you see how I've picked up my first power up there? You also have a super zapper you can use to zap things, kill all this, the stuff on the web, and that's very important because when these things get up to the top, it becomes rather stressful because it's very hard to get in close and kill these things without getting killed yourself. So what you'll generally do is you'll try and kill stuff and hope that you get a power up <laughs> That you clear the whole web and then get out of there and fly to the next level and get your bonus points. One important change from TXK is that they're using the original Tempest 2000 music, which interestingly enough was actually written on an Amiga, I believe. It was in like the mod format where you've got a bunch of samples that are played at different rates and there are, you know, four channel samples and all that. And that was all originally on the cartridge on the Jaguar, but when Atari created the CD add-on for their Jaguar console, that is an add-on that nobody bought for a console that nobody bought, 
Uh, they bundled with it a CD copy of the soundtrack to Tempest 2000, and it is considered, you know, something of a classic. I've got to say, you know, if, if uh, anybody's talking about making vinyl copies of soundtracks from classic games, Tempest 2000, definitely one I'd like to have. But as you can see, you go through the game, the music changes, things get more intense. Right, we've got some new levels, we've got some new enemies, and one thing to notice is the video encoding format just starts to suffer terribly. Jeff Minter's games are really good at giving the video encoding experts at YouTube just nightmares. There's just too many particles flying around doing in different directions, too much depth, too much color changing. And I love it. However, one thing that is missing from the original Jaguar 2000 version is there, there would be these chill out levels that would come like every 10 levels or 5 levels and you'd be just kind of flying along and moving through, uh, flying through hoops and things like that with some chill out music in the background and I haven't encountered that anywhere in this version. I remember one of the levels was nicknamed Flying the Bacon because you were flying over a planetary surface which was a scan of the surface of Jupiter and people thought that it actually looked like you were flying over a slice of bacon instead. You know, I actually did the math and if Jupiter was made of bacon then it would represent about 10 to the 31 dietary calories. Anyway, look, at each, start at each level, you reset all your power-ups and what you're really looking for is either the AI droid or the jump. Because once you've got those, it becomes a whole lot easier to stay alive. But before that, there is always the danger of something getting up to the top of the web and attacking you and you being stuck, getting squeezed into increasingly smaller and smaller uh, corners of the web and then essentially succumbing. But at the start of each level, you do also get a super zapper and that is great because it lets you kill everything on the entire web, even the stuff that is sitting right at the top. So typically, as the bad guys are squeezing in, you are deciding whether to save your Super Zapper or use it for one glorious, destructive orgy of pixel you know, particles flying around. Look, it is ultimately a modern-day repackaged version of a, a classic game, and it is a great version of that. It is intense. It is everything you want from a Jeff Minter game. But not everybody wants Jeff Minter games, especially if you're one of those people that's photosensitive because Jeff Minter games are notorious for really pushing the limits on what graphical effects you have on the screen. And it, it's, it's really amazing that you know, early on you'll say, how the hell can I actually see what's going on? And you know, a few hours later you are totally seeing through the waves of pixels, the flashing lights, and you are picking out the threats and you're identifying them and you're owning them and you're just enjoying it all the way through. I'm not really treating this as a new game, this is a, a re-release, a remaster of a game which was only ever released on obscure consoles 25 years ago. Finally it is now on a platform where everyone can appreciate and see just how insane this stuff is. Uh, it's, it's great. If you're on the PlayStation, there is also Polybius, which supports the VR if you just feel that you need bigger, more all-encompassing visual stimulation. I'm not sure I'm there yet myself. Jeff also has like a history of designing uh, visual light synths. That's his idea, one of his concepts. You know, basically music visualization systems. He actually ended up doing the visualization system that's used on the Xbox 360. Apparently he had to fit it into 128k of memory. And he also released a game on it, uh, Space Giraffe, which I think you can get on the Steam store anyway. It's very similar to Tempest, but it has a uh, something called a RAM mechanic where, uh, you know, you would actually encourage the hostiles to get to the top of the, the thing and then you could ram them off assuming you'd charged up enough power and so the way you would score would be you would try to get as many things up the top and then knock them all off but sometimes you would you know, run out of power and you would die. But Tempest 4000 is more faithful to the original Tempest mechanic and it just has everything turned up to 11. Oh it's glorious, it's glorious and I just wish I had a bigger flashier screen to play this on. Okay. Oh, I hate this web. This one has, yeah, you see you've got this crossover section which gets really complicated. There's a super zapper to kill everything and then try to grab that. There we go. Zip, zap, zap, zap. Okay. 
So what you're gonna try and keep doing is grabbing those power-ups. If you do not grab the power-ups, you will probably fail the level. Oh, they're over- oh damn, missed it. Ah! Uh, beauty! I think that best way best describes this game. What? What the heck happened there? That was really, really bizarre. <laughs> Oh man, I think the fact that I have no idea is what's going on is probably all you need to know about Tempest 4000. Yeah, I'm a fan. Jeff, you're my hero. I love I love your work. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.